Hello, this is Chris Pratt from Eurogamer, and I'm joined by Andy and Andy from Pocket Watch Games to take a look at Tooth and Tail. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I'm excited to show it to you. So we're going to jump into a versus game and then just kind of muck around with the mechanics and get a feel for it. And sure. then maybe we'll wrap up the video with an actual uh, 1v1. Great. Which I imagine, considering you made the video game, you might have a good <laughs> chance at winning. <laughs> and this is a game in development, so there will be a few bugs. And, Excellent. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, when when are you expecting it to be a thing that people can play? 2016. We're uh, we're still trying to nail down a final release okay. date, but but definitely this year. All right, cool. So this is uh, probably one of the most important decisions you make in in uh, Tooth and Tail mm -hmm. is selecting the six units that you can uh, like create in your roster during the game. Right. So I might stick with this setup because I, I think I know it. Yes, um, sure. I've, so I've got uh, I'm on the right hand side here, player two. I've got a couple of tier one units which are the, the cheapest that you can buy, mm -hmm. a squirrel and a lizard. So the the whole theme of uh, Tooth and Tail, in my mind, it's like, so because my game's doing this, obviously I have to compare games to other games. Sure, yeah. That's the only way to yeah. do it. It's like sort of like Starcraft meets like Red Wall for yeah. me. Yeah, um, if, if people know the, the, the Red Wall stories. The conceit of the world is that the animals. Um, uh, this is sort of turn of the century era, World War One era, and the animals are all starving because they all eat meat. Mm -hmm. And so it, it launches their society into a revolution right. over who's going to have to be the meat. So <laughs> someone is, t tomorrow someone is going to eat and someone's going to have to be dinner. It's probably going to be the tier one units. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, I'm glad, I'm going to stick with the setup, set but I'm glad that you've uh, kept your tier three unit there, your, like one of your most powerful, the owl, mm -hmm. just because I love the design of this <laughs> unit. So yeah, do you want to you explain how the owl works before we jump sure, in? Sure, yeah, the owl, uh, the owl is a flying unit mm -hmm. and it pukes up mouse paratroopers for free, you don't you don't you sure. don't spend any food on them. So it's, so. it's like the Broodmother in Starcraft. But, it is, but it's an owl that sicks up yeah. mice to yeah. attack its enemy. That's, exactly. I got a lot of time for that. Andy, <laughs> oh, like, cool. Well, I'm I'm good to go then. All right, let's do this. And yeah, the, so what what do you guys think the usual kind of match time is in in a game of? Uh, well, we're aiming for shorter matches on average. Okay. So anywhere between five and twelve minutes on is what we're seeing on average. So okay. somewhere between seven and eight. Now, uh, the reason for this is because part, part of what <sighs> makes RTS games exhausting, in our opinion, is that if a match can draw for 20 to 30 minutes, yep. being in a losing position for that is really frustrating. Sure. Because those are really mentally exhausting. Mm -hmm. and when we come home and we want to play a game, we want to relax and have fun, not necessarily, not necessarily be stressed out right. over a long com competitive match. And clicking as fast as you can for, right. <laughs> Absolutely. for that long. Um, uh, so yeah, to, to start with, we are like building up our farms, which is the equivalent of like mining in many RTS games. Um, spending the food that's up at the top here right. to do that to get more food. And um, one of the things that's unique about our game is that the worlds are procedurally generated, um, which means that you really have to. Not yeah, only are we building farms, but we also have to explore the world at this. I haven't match. actually found you. So I, what I've done there is I've uh, looked at your screen. To <laughs> yep, there we are. Oh, it what a, a surprise! Leader. This is where you are on the map. <laughs> Well, in online mode, you won't be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, so the good thing about split screen and screen cheating is you can always punch the guy. So exactly. Yeah, it's a <laughs> good advantage. So I'm building a uh, squirrel burrow here, uh, yep. which will start to produce squirrels. And they produce them on their own. So yep. it's so what, one of the things that we, we didn't want to remove all micro entirely, but what we wanted to do was try and make micro fun. Absolutely. Um, so we wanted to take out the repetitive chores, the things like, you know, clicking to spot to to recruit new units or mm -hmm. to buy new units. Um, so the the structures themselves will build up to some maximum amount. So the tier one units will build up to three per warrant. Yep, cool. You can see that here. Um, and I should I'll show how this works. Basically, we were talking about how a controller works in mm -hmm. RTS. You sort of use your character to determine where to move your units. So you can see on the right hand side here, I'm telling my units to move there and attack anything that they see. Right. But it means that you actually have to put yourself, your character in harm's way to be the cursor, which exactly. is an interesting thing. Because you can die, and if you die, you're out for a few seconds, which means you can't control your units. Right. Um, oh, I definitely didn't just build another. You can sell it. <laughs> there, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, so um, uh, um, one of the interesting things um, also in the game is that there's a lot more emphasis on selling things. Sure. Um, you can uh, you can sell in order to tech switch. You can sell pretty much all your structures at full price in order to um, in order to change your mind or to, or to, to tech yeah, switch. Yeah, like really really quickly. And you really kind of have to do that because your structures are building their units autonomously. Sure. 
Um, so if you have a, a structure that is soaking up your economy, yeah. um, that it, for a unit that the opponent has countered, mm -hmm. um, then you, you want to go back and sell that. Or if, for instance, you're, see, we can see that my farms are starting to, to run out. Each farm will last for around five minutes, right. which sort of forces the game to move forward. Sure. Um, and if you are running low on farms in comparison to the, the, the warrens that you have, you probably want to go back and sell yeah. some warrens as well. I found that really interesting in the game we, we played just before before this actually, how quickly you can just switch strategies. Um, right. Sure, you will have sunk some food into into it in the first place and maybe you've lost units in the process, but actually switching to new uh, buildings mm -hmm. is just a matter of time more right. than resources. Exactly. Now, you did a good thing, which is that you caught me trying to build a whole bunch of landmines there, and if you destroy the landmines right. before they actually fu are fully built, you can get them. But uh, oh, no, no ferrets, ferrets. <laughs> why are you so slow? No, yeah, they're, ferrets. They're glassy, so they have longer range than everything else. But they're but they're very glassy. Yeah. Um, so they're really good at taking out defensive structures. Um, but cool, if I, I can get to them, uh, yeah, it's so I, my defensive structure that I brought along was a turret, which is pretty useful. They they only cost sixty food. Mm -hmm. But I if he has ferrets, then he'll be able to attack your turrets. Uh, yeah, that was totally the plan. Maybe. <laughs> Do you see the the units that your opponent picks? So even you don't. if you're not nope. okay, so uh, it will be a surprise if you're playing online. Right. We That's we like in the game to, to poker. Right. Um, that you have a hidden hand, yeah. and you only have to show that hand. Um, when you want to play the card. Sure. You know, I, that's not how poker works, but you get the point. I get. Yeah, I get. It, I get it. <laughs> so um, you, yeah, you could like. Finding out what tier three units um, your opponents brought right. along. And is actually I caught you yeah, off guard. Oh, no, I caught no, you with your army no. out of position. Yeah. So you can, um, although because I'm a new player, I'm finding it a little bit easier to do this. And I'm moving my army as a single mass. Mm -hmm. um, you can switch between units at the bottom here and say like, all right, just the ferrets walk over here, please. Right. Thank you very much. You, they use the left trigger or the left mouse button in sure. order to do that. Um, yeah, but, but because I'm uh, a little bit new to this, I'm just like, everyone move there, please. And that means sometimes I'm leaving my base a little bit open. Right. Now I've got a skunk. He bottles up his own farts and and, uh, um, and uh, basically puts mustard gas onto the field. Um, so I'm ruining your farms over okay, here. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm doing it oh, to you dear. as well. It's <laughs> <laughs> a base rush. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, you can have that, but you can't have all my warrens. Okay, I just... Okay, cool. Okay. I didn't need that one anymore, so but I got the windmill. definitely can't have my warrens. All right. Uh, let's probably leave now. Oh no, I've left the ferrets again, haven't I? <laughs> Every and time with the ferrets. So if you're retreating, you want to hold the trigger because the, a trigger hold is equivalent to a move command, whereas a, when you release it, it's equivalent to an attack Ah, move yeah, command. right, okay, cool. Um, um, yep. So, uh, so my, I was actually telling my ferrets to attack everything on their way to that destination. Sure, you were clicking back in your base, but because you weren't holding the trigger, they still could see enemies, and so they would stop. They were stopping. Right. Fire. Okay, I got it. Um, so if you want to retreat, you you got to make sure that you, uh, you hold that trigger. What's going on? Oh <laughs> man, my ferrets are in a lovely position here. Actually, <laughs> shame that I don't have enough units to keep them alive. Uh, oh this God. might be the end. Yeah. Before I even get my owls out. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Oh no, well, why we'll see him in the next match. Yep, okay. We'll see him in the next this match. This is why you build defensive structures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or another possibility is, is that that um, you can just keep your opponent so busy yep. that they never have time to attack you. Okay. Um, so that's that would be more of a pressure game, you know? Cool. Um, well, uh, yeah, I feel like yeah, I haven't played this get this match particularly well. I've left one farm that just kind of lost all its uh, <laughs> resources here. Um, so we'll probably switch over to Sure. So a, a, a real go at this. But Feel free to surrender because I'm not gonna. Okay. All right. <laughs> Is there anything, um, anything else that we should we should mention before we are completely absorbed by trying to win a game? Uh, <laughs> so the outside of the. The multiplayer, you said there's a single player campaign as well? There is a single player campaign, there's an editor, so you can um, make your own levels if you... So these are procedurally generated? These are procedurally now. generated, yeah, and, and um, you know, that, that does mean that, they're, that you might sometimes have a good spawn and a bad spawn. We actually think that that makes the game more interesting because it's more fun to, to you know, occasionally play from a hole and occasionally play from an advantage. Sure. Um, but if you want to play uh, from symmetrical maps, we have an editor and you can build symmetrical maps cool. as well. Cool. All right. There you are. Well, that was very well timed, may I add. <laughs> you, you wrapped up that sentence as you won the game. <laughs> this uh, is a replay, by the way, of the match. So you can, even with online matches, you can, uh, you can you know, go back and watch what your opponent did. Sure. Can, 
uh, you know, you can turn on visibility. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you can this switch is, the commander. Is you can show the graphs. There's, there's a variety of different graphs here to, to take a look at. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool. So. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we can switch over to um, a proper go. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know do why this. I'm saying that like uh, it's going to be any different than me like <laughs> building some farms and then massing squirrels. Here, well, the one thing that I will say, and this is, you know, even though we're making something that w that certainly we describe as a as an accessible RTS, the one thing that that does require is is, a, is an understanding and a mastery of of the economy, and that's sure. that's where a lot of the depth comes in. So. The one thing that I will say that if you want to play a match competitively, make sure you build your farms when you can. Right. Um, okay. At your first base. Right. And then, and then in the future, like uh, expanding to new windmills and expanding to new farms yep. is something that you, are, you have. To, it's a conscious trade-off between units versus sure. your, for your economic. Expansion. But the first one, just make sure you get enough out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless, unless of course, your, you, your spidey sensors are tingling and you think I'm going to rush you. Okay. Exactly. That's what you would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not going to give you time to plant my mind. So that's, that's how quick this is going to go. He says as he builds some farms, <laughs> and then actually no, what I didn't do very well last time was actually scout at the beginning. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you can queue I, up I've one. I've already got farm. one queued. Yeah, uh, that's good. And then I'm gonna do like a little scouting run here, and then when I'm start when I'm close to having enough food in order to build another farm, I'm gonna burrow home. Um, you can also use the burrowing home to warp between different bases. Oh, and I I just did a loop here. So okay, cool. I didn't need to do that, but you should burrow home. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, and uh, um, I'm just I'm just getting my farms ready. I, I, that's all that's all I'm concentrating on right now. So now that you have your farms sort of building and mm -hmm. there's not much to do, you should always go and check your opponent periodically. Okay. Because if they are ever planning on rushing you, you need to see it so you can react in time. Right. You might even notice that like maybe I didn't quite build as many farms as you, and it's like that's funny. That's sure. weird. Sure. Yeah. Our best players start to get a get build an intuition based off of what behaviors they see their opponent do. Absolutely. And they can start to respond before even seeing what actually has happened. All right, so you've built, built plenty of farms, and it's time to actually start getting some units in the field. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'm really, okay, I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm just, I'm really mm -hmm. into massing squirrels, so, <laughs> oh no, I, I can't tell you that, because now you're gonna just pick something. But yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll build my toads, which are the uh, counter to, to okay. squirrels. But if you can, you can uh, micro the squirrels to take out the toads before they, the toads are, are suicide units. They have a stick of dynamite attached to right. them and they'll go up and blow up. And they're really good anti-tier one unit. Okay. Um, but the squirrels can kite them. So if you are tricky with, the mount, with, uh, um, with clicking the trigger, you can kind of pull your squirrels to just stay out of range of those toads. Andy, I'm incredibly tricky when it comes to <laughs> All right. The other thing is sometimes, um, sometimes your opponent well, if, if you're not being aggressive towards me, I'll be like, oh, this guy is not an aggressive player, so why not, exp you know, why not try and take a, uh, a risky expansion? Sure. All right. Boom. Oh, no, no, no. Now Did you see how I said that I was going to mass squirrels? And, and then, then you went <laughs> lizard. Well this gone. is just the start of the many tricks that you can expect <laughs> in this game. So, yeah, the lizards are faster than every other unit on the field, so they're really good for hit and run sure. tactics. So you can like flank them, but I just saw you, I see you trying to flank me. Like, what? Pull, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm gonna pull my guys over here because oh, no, I'm not gonna let you do get my. Okay. I did take a risky expansion. I actually, I tried, take it. I tried to flank and then managed to run into a wall, so <laughs> that was, <laughs> was not quite as speedy as I would have liked. All right. Oh, wow. Oh shoot! Nice. All right. I was not paying now, one thing you want to do is not make is make sure you don't overcommit because your units will take damage over time. So I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That should have been more of a hit and a run than just a hit. Right. <laughs> they, are, they don't have a lot of health, but they do a okay. ton of damage. All right. Good. Oh man, I'm. And that's good though. You you definitely like you you pulled a win out there. Of course. You didn't see me building landmines in while you oh were doing no. that. Oh no! God damn it! And that was the thing that that I said that I wouldn't let you do. As now well. that they're fully built, you have no idea where they are, and they will blow up on you. Um, Excellent. <laughs> Looking forward to. Oh, that was stupid. Uh, so yeah, it's it's interesting because like the the thought is well, I, what if I want like oh, oh what <laughs> I thought you were gonna put them by your base. <laughs> <laughs> that is, oh, no. that is so uncool, man. <laughs> so the way you can counter that is the landmines do a lot of well, they do an area amount. Sure, of but if you send a single, yeah, so you can send single units yep. in to detonate it, or you can build units that have more health to absorb it. Right, right. and so then the he the units will heal up 
if if they don't take damage for a while. So they will heal up over time. All right. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, that wasn't, that wasn't good. No, not the ferret, not the <laughs> ferret. I've done the same thing I did in the last game. Don't protect your um, ferrets, you got, Chris Brad. <laughs> you've got snakes, which are, um, snakes are really good at, um, uh, snakes are not great against tier ones, but they're really good against tier twos and tier threes because a single shot, Sure. A, a single uh, point of damage from a snake will poison that, that unit and it will eventually die. Um, uh, it'll take one damage per second um, from then on. Oh, no, no, no. So, so I can't build... Oh, okay. You need yeah. territory. Yep. Okay, you have to... Okay, so I was going to try and quickly hold that and mm -hmm. then... Now, my skunks are gassing up that area, so you want to pull your units yep. out of the gas. Got make it. sure they're not standing in the gas because they'll take, they'll take significant damage while standing inside the gas. Um, you also have a... <laughs> <laughs> that can't work, that can't work. Okay, <laughs> I need to now protect what I've just done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Well, oh, that's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, that will do, that'll work because uh, gas doesn't damage buildings. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. that's, actually, <laughs> that's actually a really good counter. I'm gonna have to, to be clever about how to All counter right. this. It does mean that, that a lot of your sort of army value is, yeah, is sunk into buildings. Sunk into buildings. Yeah. Um, when you decide to go more mobile, though, you can always sell those structures. Yeah, and then th that's, that's the thing. That's actually a bunch of food in the bank. Mm -hmm, um, exactly. If I, if I, I'm sure I won't do that very well, but potentially you could free up. So my counter to this is actually going to be, well, I shouldn't tell you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to sell my turrets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think your turrets were a good move. So okay. w my, uh, my counter to that was going to be um, owls because the owls can just continually throw cheap units yeah, at sure, the turret or sure. it, free units at the turrets. Um, but it was going to take a long time for those owls to get out. So now I've actually sold a bunch of my my unit production and and dropped it into owls that no longer are useful. Yeah, to that me. was the that was. So <laughs> I'm actually going to go back and sell. I mean, I probably could have waited a little bit longer before chickening <laughs> out and selling everything. All right, cool. All right. So now what I'm going to do is build turrets again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like this. This adds a different flavor to local court games. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, if I can oh, take oh, it out no, before... No, 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 no. No, I wasn't able to take it out, but but might have enough other units to be able oh. to... I think my, my economy was really, really strong for a while, and now I think I've let go. it go. Oh, that must be because your older farms have mined out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, that means I haven't been back there in a while. <laughs> yep. So but start, start looking for more farms to get. Yeah. All right, because it's only going to get slower, and yep, it really perfect. hinders you. Oh no, there, there are owls. <laughs> there are owls. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, oh, as no. long as that snake doesn't poison my owl. Oh, oh that's good. Okay, all right, I think... Stay I'll, away. I'll just, Stay oh, away. No. Stay away. And I know, because you said it out loud, your economy is in trouble right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> Oh, you, so all those turrets over there, ah, you were trying to defend your, your, no, your Warren. No, no, oh god, no. <laughs> okay, I'll do such a stupid thing, I just... <laughs> okay, because I feel like I'm about to lose, I'll tell you. I just sold all my Warrens back at the other base because I wanted to set up a different spot, and now, and now I've lost... Your production the, entirely. And also I can't build over here because oh. you destroyed the windmill. <laughs> okay, these, these turrets are going to have to hold yes, up. Yes, yes. Oh no. Oh, and I tried to, what am I doing? I think you're in trouble. Yeah, I think so. Look, how much, look how much food I have though. Oh, uh, you gotta be see you, So much it, food. It, one of the primary mistakes is if you have, a, having a big bank is usually a, a bad sign. Yeah, it means yeah. oh, absolutely. Are, yeah. Uh, the food in your bank will not fight for you. Exactly. Right. Oh man, okay. I mean, oh, that's not my territory. tree. Oh, you had, a, you had three operational... Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, yeah. I was doing so well, and then I just did some really stupid things with turrets and <laughs> the badger and... Uh. Those, those turrets in the rear were your mistake, because they weren't helping you. Yep. Like, I was able to destroy the windmill without ever having to even fight that. Yeah, I was, so it was defending the badger rather than the windmill, and wasn't, I wasn't really thinking that you were going to be able to attack that. But right. look, look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> look at all these terrible things. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? This is a pretty typical length match, too. Sure. So, um, okay, that was a good representation mm -hmm. of one mm -hmm. player making a bunch of mistakes and, and the other and player capitalizing on and that. And sometimes it goes really, really epic, but epic, like, honestly, a game a game that lasts 12 minutes feels so epic. Sure. Um, and uh, and then, you know, sometimes you get those, those really intense, like, pressure or rush games that mm -hmm. are just, like, five, six minutes um, that, uh, you know, have the... Have the incredible amount of intensity to them.
Excellent. Well, Great game. thank you, yeah, GG. Thank you so much for your uh, time, Andy and Andy. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Let's not look at the graphs. That's fine. Um, and yeah, so sometime in 2016, uh, we can expect Tooth and Tail. Yep. Um, that is an entire year, uh, but at some point <laughs> during that. <laughs> it's not an entire year. We're already in March. All right. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, it looks it looks really fun, and I I just I love the theme an awful lot. So thank you for awesome. showing it to us. All right. Well, thanks for having us. Let's begin with a quick comparison. Importantly, very, very importantly, both the Xbox One and PS4 versions appear to be running at 60 frames per second. Overwatch may not be the twitchiest first person shooter out there, but I can't imagine playing it at anything less than that. As for the resolution, well, let's go over to developer for that. It's using a scaling resolution system, so...